Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, I believe. Just getting back into civilization here after a major uh, storm in Tennessee. Lots of ice everywhere, especially in the back roads. So 2024 is on its way now and um, time is accelerating. Time will appear to be accelerating because in its metaphysical way um, and because of geomagnetics, time really is accelerating to our perception in this uh, linear 3D. We are in a year of great volatility. We have come through a time where the world systems have been challenged, exposed, and we are moving into a time where the world systems will now be more threatened by the collective because now the truth is blasting out to the collective and the collective is uprising against these uh, establishments, institutions, and world systems. I talk a lot about finance here. I talk a lot about um, religion because those are two systems that are major pillars of the old world, which is passing away, that are being threatened. And there's nothing we can do about it. It's just happening. It is God. It is the universe. It is the source. It is the force. And that source and force comes from within because the kingdom is within us. And so is the world. The Christ is within us. And so is the ego in this world with its attachments to this world. And all is connected to bring forth the purpose of our awakening. And we are in an accelerated awakening right now where the old regime will not only be threatened and challenged, but it will be um, it will be demolished, renewed, restructured, um, realigned. Uh, it will arise in a new fashion, in a new form. And I talked about the Christ in his resurrected form and how that reveals to us that um, we're, we're in that very time right now where the Christ is arising in the second coming to us. And as the Christ arises, we ascend as we perceive the Christ in resurrected form, which is multidimensional. And depending on the perception of the Christ, you know, some saw the Christ as a gardener, as a man walking on the road. Um, and in that moment where they saw him in a 3D form, there was a sadness. There was a, an emotion of, you know, of the old world passing away, right? a connection to that old world passing away. But then when the kaleidoscope of the multidimensional Christ appeared to their inner intuition, there was a resurrecting emotion of joy, exhilaration, life, revival, and supernatural opportunity that came to them. And that's where we are. That's where we are. And I find it interesting that in the scriptures, Christ says, you know, to Mary Magdalene, she thinks it's the gardener and she's so sad. And she's like, where have they taken my Lord? Somebody has removed him from the tomb. And there's the quote gardener sitting there, standing there at the tomb. And, and then it's revealed to her that it's the Christ, the risen Christ. And she's so excited and she wants to embrace Christ. And he says, you can't embrace me like in this form. I have not yet ascended to my father. And there is a great awakening happening to humanity, which is revealing the multidimensional risen Christ, the resurrected Christ in glory, the glorified Christ to uh, humanity. And I believe that that scripture truly means that, for me, it means that humanity must perceive the risen Christ in the resurrected form 
in the resurrected forms. It's not just one form. It is multidimensional. It is endless. There are quantum ways in which we will perceive the resurrected Christ in glorified form. And as that happens, humanity is in the process of ascension. And Christ is saying, I have not yet, my, the body of Christ, my body has not yet ascended to the Father. What did Christ mean in those scriptures? What I believe the deeper meaning of that is that humanity as the body of Christ must ascend as they perceive and as we perceive the multidimensional resurrected Christ, so we ascend to the Father. And that is the body of Christ that is ascending right now. Um, and we are, before the foundations of the world, we are ascended, right? <laughs> and yet in this 3D world, we are going through the process of ascension as we, through our inner intuition and awakening and supernatural um, accelerated awakening of consciousness and understanding of the resurrected Christ are ascending as we perceive the Christ. You know, when we are in a, a lower mind frame and then a thought comes in and we want to go into that woundedness of the soul and the, the darkness of the old places and then we get our mind renewal because we see the Christ. It is a supernatural thing that the Holy Spirit does. I'll call it the Holy Spirit for me. But we get a revelation of the multidimensional Christ for ourselves. And all of a sudden, we are no longer oppressed and depressed and in unforgiveness, but we have a supernatural experience. And all of a sudden, there's a lifting and we are in the kingdom of heaven and we are now ascending we are ascending we are ascending through the mind of christ we are blasting through the realms into the multi-dimensions of the resurrected christ we are no longer living down in those dungeons of darkness and hell and hades and gnashing of teeth and the caverns of the soul that are empty black holes just sucking darkness into them that is a supernatural experience and a moment that can happen to our mind and our mind is renewed and we are revived in resurrected life and we perceive the multidimensional christ and then we can feel the heart of god and it's it's a supernatural healing it's not something we do ourselves and so on a mass scale humanity is experiencing this and if we are confined to church buildings, we're not really aware of that because we are still inside the walls of the institution and the establishment. And that's why I talk about this a lot, because I came from this establishment and it is a very confined, restricted environment um, that believes not only that it has the fullness of truth, but also that it must kind of judge the world. And it is truly blind. And that establishment must have a tearing down and a renewal. And um, that is why I've been speaking about, um, and that is why we see the Christ going in and inverting everything in the temple. And you never see Christ going to church every Sunday. He was out and about and free and liberated. And that is the call, I believe, of the church right now to, as far as the institution is concerned, is to release the people to be liberated in perceiving Christ in the multidimensional supernatural form of the resurrection in the world around them. Just as when the men went back fishing into their world, that was the world that was familiar to them. They went back fishing to the old and there they saw the resurrected Christ. And I believe that there is going to be a flood of not only anointing power, supernatural provision for those that can release the old system 
and not keep calling people back into these four walls, into these walls, into these walls, into the old establishment, into the old world. But the personal destiny of those who allow that bondage to break to the old world system will feel the fulfillment and will have the oppression lifted from the old systems that keep us bound to the old world, which is passing away. There's nothing we can do about it. It's passing away because there's something greater. There is a greater ladder of glory coming. And there are many, I'll say, tribes awakening to this latter glory. And it is a, um, a time where we're going to experience quantum leaps of downloaded truth, radical downloaded upgrade of consciousness, conscious awareness of who we truly are, of our true identity, which is the presence of God the presence of love, we, our true identity truly is love and uh, truth. And those old world systems will only keep us in decay and the maggots will come to eat at that system. And the more we hold on to it, the more that we will be tormented by the maggots of decay. And so there is going to be a radical transformation and that's why Pluto has entered Aquarius because the collective uprising um, must happen where the, those systems have to be threatened but in our old mindsets we'll see anyone that comes against those systems or speaks the truth or just like the prophet said look this is coming accept it or not it's coming it's the truth it's going to happen and they were stoned and they were killed and they were told to get out of the town and just like Jesus said you know a prophet's never received in his own hometown but regardless, there, there will be a, um, an uprising against the old world. And there is a new arising in multidimensional form that is happening. There will be a lot of volatility. Um, the passing away of the old, and so there will be a grieving of the old but we don't have to stay in that grief of the old because it doesn't serve where we're going. It doesn't serve our future spiritual path. And what humanity is undergoing is a very profound transition right now. A very profound transition and transformation. Some are on the crest of that wave and some are in the some are lagging. And the greatest power, I believe, in this transition time is humility, is, is being open, open. Um, if we are going to stay in concrete, restricted, institutionalized mindsets that never evolve. And part of fundamental Christianity, unfortunately, it involves a mindset that is includes that we do not evolve, that we once we know the Bible in its concrete form, we know all the truth and that truth is it and there is no other. And that's the unfortunate part of fundamental Christianity that because there is such pride and um, blocks of density in that system, it's going to have to undergo um, major volatility major volatility so the light can come in and evolve and transition and transform those that have been stuck in those densities and we can just take a quick look at them and see the judgment that's involved in those densities and the lack of love and the lack of self-awareness one of the greatest things that i see in fundamental christianity which i know because I was part of that establishment and I am still undergoing and unraveling out of it. And a lot of it involves the mindsets, but one of the greatest blindnesses that I see as part of being in that establishment rooted in that establishment is self-righteousness 
and an unawareness of my own darkness. The path to the kingdom is within, and we must tra traverse paths of darkness. Now, that doesn't mean we have to stay years and years in the same darkness, but we're constantly traversing paths of darkness, ancient paths, paths of iniquity, paths of trauma. Right now, particularly, people, humanity, are carrying compacted traumas. That's where we are right now, because we're in that time of the dark ages, transitioning out into deliverance out of those dark ages. So, you know, we can say, oh, how could those people still be in their trauma? How could they still be talking about this and talking about that? Why can't they get free? But humanity as a whole, in the larger macro scale of cycles, is in a place of transition out of the dark ages and has in is containing that darkness that must be delivered out of into the light of the kingdom of glory. And so we are at the bottom of that cycle in the dark place. And so that's why we're talking about these things. And that's why it seems like so many, if not all of us are stuck, it's like we're stuck. Why can't I get free? Why can't I shake this? Why can't I get out of it? And a lot of times in spirituality, we bypass, we spiritually bypass and say that we're fine or, oh, I've forgiven that person or, oh, I'm healed. Um, one of the most profound healings that I have had in my life without any question and any doubt was the, the moment that I realized that God was part of my true essence. God, the divine, the source, the creator is who I am. Capital I, capital A, capital M. The great I am, the goodness of I am, the love of I am is the core of who I am. <laughs> And that I am is that source and that creator and that I have the power to co-create with I am because I am that I am. And I have been created in this love and in this power and in this glory for this latter glory through I am. And I am cannot be extracted out of me or separated from me because it is the essence and the core and the identity of who I am. And the scriptures are a metaphorical, allegorical, poetic story about that journey of my soul into I am. And it was when the scriptures awakened to me in that way that judgment began to fall away and I, I dropped the Bible and I let go of the judgments of using that book as a weapon against humanity. And it began to become a healing path for my own soul journey into my true identity, the great I am. And that is a humbling journey. It's actually a very inverted spiritual concept because when we are in fundamental Christianity, we think that we're saved and we're good and we're fine and the rest of the world is going to suffer in hell. And that's another whole concept that we can go into and how that whole concept of hell changed for me. But um, and I believe it is changing for the world. And unless that religiosity is willing to let go of those concrete densities of darkness and dogma and doctrine. It will die away with that doctrine and with that institution and with that establishment. And so out of one side of our mouth, we could say, I want to run my race. I want to go and move in supernatural power. I want to move in the new glory. I want to know the multidimensional Christ. But the other part of us, the old world of the ego can be attaching itself still to the desires of that old establishment, whether it's because it's safe, whether it's through fear, whether it's through um, control, whether it's through holding on to self intentions and self motivations that are attached to that system. And that's the part of the shadow where God is working to traverse us through the inner path inside to the kingdom. And that's the spiritual bypass that we do in, in Christianity. It's like we're focused on everybody out there, but we're ignoring the spiritual path within and the path of true intention into our own heart, which is not a path of shame, but a path of freedom, freedom. And that's why when we come to know that everything is energy, for some reason, at least for me and for the people that I notice that 
truly on our path of transformation, when we know everything is energy, or I'll call it spirit, we really can see in the unseen realms. And that, to me, increases faith. And that's when obedience is easier, because we know that everything is energy. And if I know that I am, say, holding on to a dark energy, or moving in a dark intention out of my heart, and I'm aware of it, I'm self-aware, okay? This means I'm conscious, I'm consciously aware, I'm not spiritually denying it, I'm not being blind to it, and I become self-aware. It's like a, it's a momentary sight, and I can see, oh, that's a dark energy, and I don't want that dark energy attached to me. I want to be loosed of that dark energy. I do not want to be um, dragged down by it. I do not want to be on it with a heavy weight from it. It's only going to torment me. It's only going to drag me down and oppress me and bring me into more darkness. And when we can get a revelation of energy, we can get sight of energy. It no longer becomes about a religious path of rights and wrongs. It actually becomes about a path of truth and freedom. And we realize that this energy is far beyond any, um, in a sense, power of our own in attachment to the ego, to this world. But it's it's an energy that is attached supernaturally to the great I am in us, which is humbling. That's why we're on a humbling path. When we surrender to the I am, the greatness of I am arises. And that is humbling. And that is glorious at the same time. And that's where we are. That's why there's so much volatility that's ahead of us. It's coming. There's an acceleration coming. There's a lot of power being released in the spirit, in the spiritual realms, in, in and through us. And there will be an accompanying of humility, love, compassion, and kindness, self-awareness, less and less spiritual bypass a sense of repentance, which comes in a million different ways. It's not always just, you know, something happened the other day and, and somebody texted me and they said, sorry, that happened to you. And I, I just thought, you know, cause it's so easy for us to see in somebody else, the pride when they can't say, wow, I'm so sorry that you went through that. I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, when we say sorry without the word I'm, that's why I always talk about speaking in the first person. So it was like this third person, sorry that happened to you, because I knew that the person didn't really, I shouldn't say I knew because I don't know their heart, but I didn't feel the compassion there, although it was religiously texted to me. I knew that it was more about the motivation of what this person needed me to get done, and I couldn't get it done because of the circumstances around what was happening. And but they they knew they kind of, they knew they kind of had to text me and um, acknowledge what had happened. So it was like this: sorry that happened, you know. And when we really get that transformation and we understand energy and we understand our own spiritual path, we then can contain. We then have the containment for the compassion for others, knowing that we see God, we see others just as we see ourselves. We see God in others and we see them in their spiritual path. And compassion wells up inside of us, knowing we are just like them. They are just like us. It's not this self-righteous, you know, Christianese type of, I'm, I'm awesome, I'm great. You know, I make a little sin here and there, but I'm good. And uh, I'll, I'll have grace on you because I know you're not where I am yet. That's all false humility. That's all breaking down. It has to. It has to go. It has to be demolished. It's a, a dark mindset. It's a blindedness that is being demolished. And it is a pillar of that entity and establishment of, of Christian faith. Something higher is coming. Something greater where we see the Christ in multidimensional form for ourselves, therefore, and thereby freeing us from our old mindsets that bondage us in darkness in which we are unaware of, that now free us to 
become a conduit of that flow of energy of heaven and the kingdom of God that first frees us and then flows out to others with great compassion, kindness, and love. Not of ourselves in this world, but of our true nature, our core nature, which is I am that I am the love of God. And this is where we're going, but there will be great shakeups of the establishment and the old world, which is passing away. The terrible and the great glorious day of the Lord is here. And I will see you in the spirit and the heart of God. Have a wonderful day.